Obviously, the next game on the slate is going to be my dog, my boy, Joseph Burrow, going into Foxborough in December against Bill Belichick in that defense that has been swarming, although their record doesn't reflect it. They have been consistent, at least on one end. So we got Mac Jones, Joe Burrow. The Bengals are the hottest team in football right alongside the 49ers. Who do you have coming out of this game and why? Okay, we're going to go with the Bengals in this one. I know they had a pretty shaky start last week to the Buccaneers last week, but they were able to bounce back pretty significantly in that second half and just make it an absolute runaway of a game at the end of the day. And then you juxtapose it with what the Patriots did last week. The Patriots choked it last week. There's no other way to say it. You're up 24 to 17 with about three and a half minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. And the team gives up 13 unanswered points in that time frame. You just can't have that. And granted, that was a game that I thought the Patriots had a very good chance of winning. And yet they found themselves short. And the way that they did it is unbelievable as far as I'm concerned. I'm still a little bit sensitive to how that game ended with Jacoby Myers making one of the dumbest decisions I've ever seen in NFL history. But nonetheless, they had to move on. They had to focus against a really tough team and the Bengals. And when it comes to the Patriots defense, like you said, Kev, I think that they have a pretty solid defense to go up against Joe Burrow here. But whenever the Patriots have gone up against top-tier talent this year, they have relatively struggled. Uh, when it comes to Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, they gave up over 30 points. There have been times in and out of the season where the Patriots, when going up against a really good team, they've given up 25, 30, 35 points. You can even look back to the Kirk Cousins performance that he had on Thanksgiving. That was a really good offense that the Patriots went up against with the Minnesota Vikings. And frankly, they got torched. And when it comes to Joe Burrow coming into town, I don't really see anything changing. When it comes to the requisite pieces that Joe Burrow has at his disposal, you've got Jamar Chase, you got Joe Mixon out of the backfield, you got T. Higgins, you got Tyler Boyd. I mean, that's a juggernaut you're going up against. And look at what the look at what the Bengals were able to do effectively last week. Despite being down 17 to 3 at halftime, Joe Burrow was able to just light up that Bucks defense in the second half albeit you know the Bucks had some turnovers in that game that really I think swung the momentum in favor of the Bengals in that game but Joe Burrow took advantage of it he had four touchdowns in that game I also appreciate Joe Burrow getting me uh, 28 fantasy points last week so I appreciate you Joe in that regard but going into this game I think that Joe Burrow is going to have similar success I think the only way that the Patriots make this a game is if that pass rush can get home against Joe Burrow and get some sacks and I will say that the Bengals offensive line, they have been shaky at times this year. Uh, they've been better than what they were at the beginning of the year. But if Matt Judon, Dietrich Wise, and Josh Uche, if they make it a point of emphasis to get to Joe and force some passes, and not only that, force some errant passes, force a turnover or two, and even just get to the point where they can pressure him, hurry him, or even get a sack, I think that that could really, that could really kind of sway in the Patriots' favor here. But I don't think it's going to be consistent enough to slow down this Bengals offense. I think the Bengals are just too hot to deal with right now. They're, like you said, Kev, they're one of the hottest teams in the NFL right now. They're improving their standing in the AFC as far as I see it. And despite the fact that I think the Patriots, they have a defense to contend with it, I don't think it's going to be enough. And I don't have any faith in this Patriot offense right now. Mac Jones looks like he's, he. it looks like he's completely done with Matt Patricia as far as I'm concerned. The struggles have just been, too big for me to ignore. He's coming off of one of his, what I would consider one of his weakest statistical performances last week. He only completed around 11 to 15 completions last week. So, and that was out of 30 attempts. So he's got to step up. But with Matt Patricia being the play caller for the Patriots right now, I don't really see that happening. I think when it comes down to this game, how it's going to play out, I think the Bengals win this one relatively comfortably. I'm going to say they win this one by the score of let's say 27 to 17. I think the Bengals will put up somewhere around those mid twenties, maybe the high twenties when it comes to their point total. And I just don't think the Patriots are going to make the plays that need to be made on the offensive side of the ball. And a lot of that has to do with Matt Patricia playing the call, uh, calling the plays on offense. So you factor all that together, the Bengals keep their winning ways alive. And I think the Patriots playoff chances are pretty much dead in the water. If they lose this game and the Patriots schedule does not get easier from here uh, to close out the year. So Kev, Floor is yours on this one, bro. Uh, the biggest focus for me within the Patriots potentially coming up with an upset. Yes, I have the Bengals winning as well. I mean, 
my dog is leading the way, so you know I got I got a favorite with with Joe. I really do think Kyle. All jokes aside, I think Joe's like kind of becoming one of my favorite players, if not my favorite player in the league right now. I don't know why, but just thought I'd kind of share that with the audience here. Um, my focal point, which I was getting to, is Ramondre Stevenson is probably the best back on this roster, and we know that when Damian Harris is healthy, that they are a great one-two punch. But for the two of them to be successful. They are going to have to win. The, the, the Patriots are going to have to win at the line of scrimmage. Now, I know that the Cincinnati Bengals don't have the greatest pass rusher in the world, especially with Sam Hubbard injured. Um, that is probably one of their better pass rushers. I think that the Patriots are going to have to take advantage and run the football, keep the ball away from Joe Burrow, find a way to create play action for Mac Jones and those receivers and those tight ends. I know that Mac has had probably one of the worst seasons in the league in terms of starting quarterbacks between the injury. Uh, the change at offensive coordinator, the pressure that he's received, the turnovers that he's created. I mean, it, it has not been good in terms of the Patriots offense. Like I said, the only saving grace has been their running attack. When both running backs are healthy, they're probably one of the better tandems in the league. So I will give them credit there. And again, their defense, as always, finds ways to not only create turnovers, but they also score on that side. Their special teams has been efficient. So the Patriots aren't 100% a bad football team. It's just that when your offense is on the field and you are incapable of moving the ball consistently and scoring in the red zone, that is going to leave your defense frustrated. That is going to make your defense tired because they're consistently getting on the field with little to no points on the board to show for it. Now, the Bengals have one of the most high-powered offenses with the receiving tandem of Higgins and Boyd and, of course, uh, Jamar Chase. Uh, you know, Joe Mixon is healthy. Joe Burrow's having an incredible year, and that offensive line seems to be turning it around at the right time. I agree that the Bengals have every opportunity to capitalize, but on the off chance that that defense decides to take a week off, not to say that they will, but if Stevenson and Harris combined for over 175 yards on the ground. Time of possession is going to go to the Patriots. That means that Joe Burrow is going to have to force the ball down the field. Maybe even a couple Aaron passes to fit into tight windows. I think the Patriots could potentially make this competitive. But again, in my personal and professional opinion, I don't think that that happens. I think that Zach Taylor and this offense scheme accordingly find ways to keep the ball away from, uh, I was about to say Minnesota, from New England as well. And I think that Joe Burrow has one of the, well, probably not one of the biggest games, but I say that he has a very, very good game in New England. I think that he has anywhere from three to four touchdowns, maybe even one on the ground. And I think Joe Mixon is going to have to be a pivotal piece here because of his dual threat capabilities of being able to catch out of the backfield and also make people miss behind the line of scrimmage. I think that he has got to have damn near 100 yards on the ground as well, if not 150 all-purpose yards to make this a runaway game for the Bengals. For the sake and respect that this is in Foxborough, for the sake and respect that New England is always going to have a stout defense, I say that this is going to be a 7-10 to 10 point game. I think that the, the Bengals do not score 30. I think this is going to be maybe anywhere from 24 to 28 points on the Bengals side. But again, let's just be respectful here. I'm going to go with 28-17, to 17, maybe even 28 to uh 28 24 something along those natures i just i don't know why i think the patriots show that they can compete they just end up faltering at the worst times of the game but i think that bill probably made everybody on that special teams play or excuse me on that offensive play last week to the to the raiders i think he probably made them all run and just drown them in film i don't see them making pivotal mistakes like that again and if they do Matt Patricia may be looking for a new job, man, because he, he he definitely cannot be no offensive coordinator anymore. So, Kyle, I, 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 try to, I try to understand where you're coming from, but, man, he is a whole different level of ineptitude as, a, as an offensive mind. 